Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. I hope you can hear us all right. It's going to be a fantastic evening tonight. You will not regret coming to this. I absolutely love chatting to Maria. It's the only time that I ever do a podcast or webinar and finish off more relaxed than when I started. <laughs> it's just it's just so much fun and really helps you to think about your how you manage stress and, and what we can all do about it, because we all experience it in different levels. So you're going to love tonight, aren't we, Jonathan? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And we've done a few webinars with Maria before. We have, yeah. Unfortunately, I wouldn't take, didn't take part in any of no, those webinars. No. So it, it's going to be a joy for me because I've heard so much as well and listened to the webinars. And... Well, I don't stop going on about it. No, you don't. <laughs> You've taught me well, Maria. You've taught me well. So, yeah, no, it's going to be an absolute pleasure tonight. So, hello and welcome to our Twitter spaces on getting to the heart of chronic stress for school leaders, something that's really... I'd say chronic at the moment, isn't it? It's really, especially with the Oster conversation that we're talking about, it's all paramount in the news. It's, you know, stress is really out there and it's, it's important we all help each other. And tonight we are discussing the issue of content dress for those in working schools and amazingly giving you something really useful strategies to lessen the effect it has on you. And we've got an announcement to make, haven't we, about our school business manager planners. Yeah. The floral ones have been very popular and they we have. put a competition out there. And um, we had 60 people join the competition, people, so we which... will be announcing the winner of that later on. Yeah, very excited. So we're looking forward to spinning the wheel and announcing the winner on that. So just in case you don't know, I'm Lucy. And I'm Jonathan from Head Teacher Chat. And we're the co-founders of Head Teacher Chat. We're experienced school leaders and we're really dedicated to supporting those of you who work in education. And we are joined by our special guest, Maria, who is here to help you on all aspects of stress management for in schools. Yeah, and we're talking about chronic stress, which is part of our everyday life as a school leader. And we look at whether there's anything we can do to help ourselves to reduce the effect that it has on us. And it's a real challenge for leaders at the moment. And mm. especially last week when the government announced actually how many head teachers are leaving the role, which is more than it's, it's ever been. Gosh. And it, there's, there's more people leaving the profession than ever before. Yeah. So we've got to make sure that, that some things are in place. And we've got declining budgets, limited resources. Mm. It's a really stressful time for I'm leaders. Get, I'm school. getting stressed thinking about it. <laughs> so so I'm, I have to say, Maria did teach me a huge amount last time we spoke and we had a, a webinar together. And Maria said something really key that really struck a chord with me. And she said, I talked to one school leader who had something stressful happen to them at the beginning of the day, eight o'clock in the morning. A parent came onto the playground and, and was feeling upset. And it got that school leader really stressed. And that school leader didn't calm down for the whole day until they got home. And I have to say, I've been that school leader myself so many times. I've been the one that's had something happen to me early on in the day and I've, I've really struggled to kind of calm myself all day long because you're so busy, you don't have time to stop and think. And Maria will give us some strategies tonight, I'm sure, with, where, which will help you to kind of understand how to calm yourself. And it's fantastic. It's really, really good. So I'm really looking forward to that. So there's always times when we get stressed in schools. And yeah. I've been stressed quite a few times in school. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's really good to have a toolbox of strategies that can, will help you to alleviate the stress or to set you right from the stress that mm. you encounter. Mm. It's really important that, you know, it's good. Sometimes stress is good. You know, it helps us to get things done. It helps us to focus. But it's how we manage that stress that can make a big difference. And the first step to managing that stress is to know how it affects us and why, and sometimes even to label it. We talk about labeling our feelings and emotions with children. You know, do we do that with ourselves too? Do we recognize when we're stressed? And there's some really good articles on the NHS as well, that if you are dealing with stress, that can be really a useful point to help you support you in that way. Yeah, we're, do we're gonna share some links at the end of the space session to the NHS Mental Health and Wellbeing Support so if you're feeling very stressed and you're needing some help, then we're going to send out those links for you tonight too. So look out for those. 
so anyway so what can we do about it is there an answer to any of this you know that is why we're here tonight to talk to Maria as Maria recently said herself it's possible to feel a lot better and the benefits of dealing with stress has does have a massive impact on your health and well-being I would like to introduce our guest to this evening Maria and who is an absolute expert in this field and a really good coach. Mm. And I, I'm really looking forward to this chat this evening. If you have any questions, please leave the questions in direct messages or on the thread. And we do our best to answer those in due course. So this is the Head Teacher Chat Twitter Spaces with Pursuit Wellbeing. We hope you enjoy it. Good evening, Maria. Would you like to introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background where you get this wonderful knowledge of how to deal with chronic stress? Ah, <laughs> ah that's the million dollar question. <laughs> so hi, hi everybody and, and thank you Lucy and John for having me on. It's, it's so good to be with you all this evening. And so I'm an educational leadership, health and wellbeing expert. I'm, I'm a counsellor, a coach, an author and a speaker. And over a 30 year period I've worked in, in a lot of different health and wellbeing capacities from working with individuals and companies like British Airways and Burberry and The Body Shop. But most recently, and I say recently in the last 15 or 16 years, I've worked with schools. And so I've worked with many hundreds of school leaders in the UK and internationally. And I founded Pursuit Wellbeing as a platform to, to help educators and to offer training and coaching to promote the health and wellbeing of teachers, school leaders and all school staff. So that's a little bit about me that's amazing thank you it's so nice to chat to you again maria we've i've missed our little chats with you oh i thoroughly enjoy it lucy <laughs> good to be with you it's tonight great <laughs> to have you on and i know it's going to really really help you know our our listeners tonight to help with some strategies so we we looked a little bit of the research and and we're up to date with some of the things that head teachers and school leaders are encountering at the moment what does mm. the research you found say about stress in schools? I think I'll, I'll start very briefly with the bad news and then I'll quickly move to the good news. So the, the, the kind of general research shows three important things and, and the first one is that 84% or so of head teachers would identify as being chronically stressed and, and just to put a little bit of definition about that, a, a chronic condition of any kind is something that lasts for a period of time. Acute stress is if you you know, step out of the curb and there's a bus coming and you, you need to get away from it. But chronic stress is something that's longer lasting. So something like 84% of head teachers would say that they've experienced chronic stress or they are experiencing that. The second point is that stress is really closely linked to heart disease and, and heart conditions of all kinds. And the third thing is that heart disease is the number one cause of death in this country and globally, especially premature death. So what we're talking about here isn't trivial. But I'll quickly move on to the good news in our own research because my partner is Dr. Carla Stanton and we've been working with head teachers for the last, probably coming up to two years now. And our research shows that we can turn this around by helping heads and helping people understand exactly what's happening in your body, in your brain, in your nervous system. When, once you understand that and once you can see it and we use technology to show people and, and all of the participants we work with have an app so you can actually see what's happening in your, in your brain and your body when you're stressed, especially your heart, and to turn that around. That's incredible. So like, so what, what does stress look like in our body? It goes back to that sort of what I was saying before, you know, learning how to label that you are feeling mm. stressed. What, does, what are the signs we need to look out for? How do we know if it's stress and not something else? Yeah, it's a great question because I, I never, ever talk about mental health without talking about all the other domains. So I'd say that there are four main areas of our health. So a mental, emotional, physical and spiritual health. And by spiritual, I mean, how do we feel about ourselves and our meaning and purpose in life? And so if, if we talk about how stress shows up in the body mentally, then that could be by, you know, waking up at three in the morning, remembering an angry email or a, or a difficult conversation. So that can affect us mentally by kind of playing on our mind and, and that we have these kind of catastrophizing thoughts. How it affects us emotionally might be that we experience anxiety 
over difficult conversations, for example, or difficult conversations with, with parents or colleagues. How it affects us spiritually might be that we just feel helpless and hopeless and that the whole system is broken and, you know, I'm not making any difference in the world. And it, there's this kind of sense of malaise and hopelessness. And how it affects us physically is how most people would experience stress. And we know that kind of feeling when we've got too much adrenaline in our systems or too much cortisol and we feel we might have lots of headaches or tummy aches, you know, any kind of digestive issues, hormonal issues, immune issues. In, in fact, chronic stress affects every single system and function in our body. So it can show up in tons and tons of different ways. But one of the key ways we know is through the health of our heart. And there's one key marker known as our heart rate variability. And if you've got a smartwatch or a Fitbit or something, you might have something on there that shows what your heart rate variability is. But should we do a little experiment together so people can feel your own heart rate variability? I've been waiting to, I, I love this, but yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So I just invite you, Lucy and Jonathan, and everybody that's listening, just to take your own pulse. So two fingers underneath your thumb on the non-dominant hand. So you can just gently put your fingers on your pulse point. And if you can't find it, don't worry, we're not doctors and nurses. But if you can, that's cool. If you can't find it there, you can put it on your jugular just in your neck. But just gently see if you can find your pulse. And just slow down your breathing a little bit. So breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. And just see if you can notice the difference in your pulse between the in-breath and the out-breath. Can you notice anything happening? And I won't leave you in suspense for too long. Lucy and Jonathan, can you notice any difference in your pulse rate yeah. between the in-breath and it's the out-breath? definitely... Cool. I can't even speak now, so I'm so chilled out. <laughs> it's getting longer. Yeah, it's getting pulse. longer between between the two. Right. So, sorry, say that again. Their again. heart rate is calming down. Mm. It's slowing down. That's interesting, right? So overall, it's slowing down, but the difference between the in breath is so on the in breath, it will be gradually speeding up, and on the out breath, it's gradually slowing down. So the overall, your heart rate might be coming down. But it will always speed up a little bit as you breathe in and slow down a little bit as you as you breathe out. And this is a naturally occurring phenomenon. Not many people are aware of it. I'm not sure why. But this is known as your heart rate variability. And this is the key marker of the health of your heart. And it's the key marker of your overall health, of all-cause mortality. So if you've got low heart rate variability, so very little difference between your, your heart rate on, between the in-breath and the out-breath, then that's a, that's a cause for concern. And that's what we that's what we check when we work with our head teachers. And and it's one of those things that declines naturally with age. So we would expect somebody's heart rate variability to, to decline by between two and five percent per year, just as a natural part of the aging process. So if you imagine a young kid, like a 10 year old running up the stairs, they've got so much capacity, they can run up in twos and threes and, and, and come down the stairs quickly. As we get older, that's harder to do. And if you could imagine grandma doing that, it would, it would be a harder thing for grandma to do than a 10 year old, right? That's showing the capacity of our heart and our heart rate variability. And that is what I'm talking about. It's a key marker of our health and well being. That's fantastic. Well, you know, I'm sure that's, you know, Helped an awful lot. There. I was just checking the chat box to see if anybody had any questions. Feel free to ask us a question if you have one. I'm sure we'd be very, help, you know, delighted to help. Yeah. And yeah, I, th I think we'd all calm down now, haven't we? Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what can we do, Maria, to protect our health? Because being a school leader or anything, any job in, a, in an education environment is it can be very stressful. What can we do to kind of help manage all of that? Well, let's try something else together. Because as, as I was just talking about heart rate variability and just how that naturally declines by 2 to 5% per year, the heads that we work with, have many of them have doubled that. So they've increased it by, by over 200%. So it's possible, it's one of the markers of our health that we can actually do a lot to, to protect and improve. So let's try something else together. And that's just feel your feet on the floor, whatever you're sitting on. 
just feel your feet on the floor, feel your seat in the chair. And if you feel comfortable to do it, unless you're driving, which of course don't do this if you're driving, but if you can, just close your eyes and just breathe in to the count of five and breathe out to the count of five, in through your nose and out through your nose. And we can just call this five, five breathing. But what this is doing, as you slow down your breathing and breathe a little bit more deeply, a little bit more slowly, this is doing so many things in your body. And the most important thing that it's doing is help regulate your entire nervous system. And I'm curious, just even taking a few slower, deeper breaths, I'm curious if you feel any different if you're feeling any calmer. So this is the very first thing you can do in the moment, especially, you know, as, as Lucy mentioned before, if you have a difficult conversation or a difficult interaction with a parent at, you know, eight in the morning, you don't want to have to wait until you get home and either go for a run or open a bottle of red, whatever it is that helps you to feel more regulated and, and a bit calmer. This, you can do this you know, at the time of a difficult conversation, you can do it shortly afterwards. Just go if you need to. Many heads tell me they need to just lock themselves in the loo so people can't find them. If you need to do that, then do that. But do whatever you can just to regulate your nervous system. Just take a few slower, deeper breaths and it will make all the difference in the world to your health, to your heart health, to your brain function. I mean, there are so many benefits to just learning how to, to do with this slower, deeper breathing. I think it's like a magic trick. <laughs> I feel so relaxed now. It's just like, you know, it's not a, it's not normal for me to be quiet, is it? John? <laughs> and, you know, it just, it really does make a big difference, doesn't it? It does. It always reminds me of one conversation we had with Phil Denton. And he said that Sean, he interviewed Sean Dyke, who is a football manager. And he was really having a really bad game. Mm. And he, at half time, he... He went into the toilet and did basically the same thing. He just stopped, mm. Mm. refocused what he yeah. was doing, and then he came out of the changing rooms and into the changing rooms of all the players and said a sort of like a speech to get them around, ready for the second half. Mm. And it's a very similar situation. So mm. there's, a, there's many similarities of it. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing, really, that we're all only just learning about these breathing exercises, you know, when you think obviously been going around for many many years and yet it's only now sort of starting to come out in circulation so it's it's great to be part of that and you know to pass the message on really it's, it's really important that we get that message yeah and I think one really key thing because instinctively we know how to do this with children right we would say come on calm down take a deep breath and we know that there's power in the breath but one little tip that I would offer people is to take a gentle breath in because as we just learned that when you breathe in your heart rate naturally speeds up so especially if there's somebody's upset I would say take a little breath in and then a nice long slow breath out and that really calms down the nervous system and slows down the heart rate so if somebody's upset if a child is you know dysregulated we have you know I think in, in schools people are learning a lot more about dysregulation and, and how it affects children but I don't think it's rippling out quite so much to staff and particularly not to leaders yet. So we've got, if, if you kind of apply what we teach the children, then then it'll it'll go some way to helping you feel more regulated throughout the day. I think you're absolutely right, actually. We, you know, we do learn an awful lot about helping children to to regulate their emotions and how to calm down and things like that. And we kind of allow the children to have that time. But when it comes to ourselves or you know sometimes even our colleagues time you know it's difficult to squeeze that time in and I think it's important that we allow that really because you know it's part of being a leader together and working as a team looking after each other. It is and so Maria how does it work within school on how you would support school leaders? How would that work? Well yeah, I typically work with school leaders in, in small groups of, of six, eight or ten or across a multi-academy trust. And we have four sessions together because I don't know, maybe Andy's listening, but Andy Mello was the one of the past presidents of the NAHT. And he got, got in contact with me during the pandemic and he said, 
you know that work you do with the heart? He said, does, does that like really help the heart or is that just like the heart heart, the, the kind of the love heart? And I said, no, no, really, it's the heart. And he said, could you put together a program for head teachers? Because he said, I know that they're stressed and I know that stress affects their heart. Could you help us? So with Dr. Carla and myself, we put together a short program of four sessions and we tested it actually with the Essex Primary Head Teachers Association with a group of 20 of their heads two years ago and really piloted this and tested the, the premise of the, of the work. And we, that's where we discovered that people are able to increase their heart rate variability by 200%. So, so it's four sessions. We can either do it online or in person, depending on where you're located. And we teach people how to understand what's happening in their brains and their bodies when they're stressed and how to monitor it using a device and an app where they would just wear that for 10 minutes a day. And that would typically take place those four sessions between two and three weeks between each session. And they're about two hours each. So it's a really fantastic way. The results that we're getting, people are just feeling so much happier, more in control, more able to deal with the stressors of their work. I mean, if I was a head teacher now, I would mm. definitely have used the system because I can I can see now that certain times in my career I was quite stressed in mm. what, what was going on, yeah. and, and sure. actually this has been really helpful. And I know now, or what I know now, would have helped me being a head teacher and dealt with those situations mm. a lot better than I did. Mm. It just wasn't having didn't have the time to actually do that. No, and, and we didn't have the information or the knowledge to kind of do these sorts of things, which is why you and I do what we do, isn't it? It's getting that message out there to school leaders so that they do have nice things to do and, and ways to look after themselves and that children and families and staff can benefit from the information we give. So, you know, it's it's something that we're really passionate about, Maurice. <laughs> Yeah, same. And what, what we're noticing is because I, I, I work primarily with head teachers and they often ask me then to come in and work with their SLT or their staff. And what's happening more and more is they're asking me to help with their children and young people. And so I'm doing a pilot at the moment with, with a big sixth form college near me called Farnborough Sixth Form. And I'm working with all of the tutors there. And there's 4,000 students there that are doing their A-levels. And so we're looking at ways that we can adapt this program for them so it's a kind of a train the trainer model so they can work with the young people and I'm working with a local a couple of local high schools for students that are doing their GCSEs and then today they're saying can you help us with primary school so we're we're adapting this program in as many ways as we can to make it age appropriate because I'm absolutely passionate about this as well that we can help people feel so much better we can help people able to cope with the demands of their work but also students with the with what they're required to do with with tests and exams by understanding ourselves better we can just feel and function so much better that's fantastic so how can our listeners find out more about pursuit well-being where do they need to go well two things the first thing is our website which is pursuit wellbeing.com and I think Lucy's going to pop that in the chat but also I thought it might be useful if I run a little webinar just so people if you're interested in actually seeing what this looks like and I can demonstrate live what what the technology looks like and what my heart rate is doing and, and if I put myself under a little bit of pressure you can see what that looks like so the, the webinar is free and if you want to just come and obviously it's absolutely no obligation but if you've got any questions and you'd like to actually see what it looks like I'd love to show you so that's on June the 28th and that's at 7 30 p.m and Lucy's going to just pop a link to that if you'd like to register then we'll just with, with your just email address we'll send out a zoom link to that so again that's june the 28th at 7 30 p.m uk time fabulous yeah i'll pop that link in the thread that will go out in the next sort of 10 minutes or so and i think that's great so they can visit the website pursuitwellbeing.com or join the webinar i really recommend the webinar that you actually see in action yeah. i think it's great it's a really good thing to do so if if you're around and you're available please do pop along if not there is a webinar with that recording on similar probably on our website you can head over to our headteachchat.com website and you will see a webinar recording on there won't you so i mean i'm just trying to think yeah. of is what other sort of tips that we can help school leaders with mm. to managing their stress is I, 
I think there's there's one one mnemonic that I really like, which is called MENDS, M-E-N-D-S, which stands for Mindfulness, Exercise, Nature, Diet, and Sleep. And they're all the things that we talk about a lot, but that's a really helpful little tool to remember as the foundations of your health and well-being. So that's MENDS, Mindfulness, any kind of mindfulness practice, uh, what we do with this would count as that, but any kind of mindfulness practice, exercise, just moving your body, especially if you're finding yourself feeling chronically stressed, just move your body in some way every single day, if that's walking or doing any more exercise. Get out into nature as much as you can. It's the great leveler. It's the great neutralizer. Diet, it's really, really hard. I And this is a little bit of a part of what we do on the program. We don't specifically talk about you know, cholesterol or diet or anything like this, but it comes up in almost every conversation that people don't eat well when they're stressed. Just, and we all do it, you know, we make poorer choices. We just grab something that's quick and that will just give us a boost of energy, a boost of sugar, or we drink more caffeine, coffee, sugary drinks, or in the evening we drink more alcohol. And it's our body's way of just trying to help us manage the, the stressors of the day. So if you can do your best to you know, have good snacks with you, make sure you eat good meals. So that's your diet and sleep. I I can't emphasize enough how much difference it makes when you can prioritize sleep and do all that you can to get a good night's sleep. Oh, it's been so that's my they're my tips. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much, Maria. It's been really helpful chatting tonight. And I know that that will have really helped an awful lot of people out there. And you know, you know, as you say, Jonathan, it's important to have a toolbox Uh, or strategies to tap into so when you're feeling stressed you you know what to do so as as Maria said you know the meds analogy is a great one because if you go back to you know what you actually need basic needs you know good sleep good diet exercise all of those things will help you to feel a lot better absolutely thank you very much Maria for that very insightful conversation this evening Great, you're very um, welcome. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks so, so much, Maria. And now we're going to go on to our competition, which we're very excited about. The wheel is spinning, and any minute now it will. And the winner is. Oh, we've got a very long Twitter handle, but basically it's School Business Partner. So, congratulations, School Business Partner. You are the winner of our School Business Manager Planner tonight. We will DM you and let you know that you have won your prize. All we need you to do is to send us your details and we will send that out to you. And Maria, did I hear that you were going to add a little present in there too? I'm very happy to. I have a a book I wrote called The Pursuit of Sleep for Teachers, so I'm very happy to to send out a copy of that book as well. A really lovely thing to do. Thank you so much, Maria. That's really, really kind of you. And tonight we're going to finish on the... Oh, hang on. Sorry, before we finish, we have two questions. Oh, men's. Could we get a chat on better sleep, says Orla? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I, I, I would quite like to do that one too for myself. So let's do that, Maria. We'll book another date and we'll we'll do a, a Twitter Spaces about sleep. But you have got a book, haven't you, Maria? That's what we... Yeah, yeah, The Pursuit yeah. of Sleep. So I'm very happy to share a link to that. Or, yeah, but let's, let's do a Twitter Spaces yeah. about that. It's so common yeah. for people to struggle either getting to sleep or waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to get back to sleep. It's it's so, yeah. so common. So, yeah, love Look to out that. for that in the autumn, Maula. I'm sure we'll, we'll have one booked in. And I yeah. think we'll all be joining that with you. <laughs> I think I'd listen to Maria do a podcast on sleep with, I think it was Cornerstones. Yeah, I did, oh. yeah. And I remember that one. That was very good. One of my mm. favourites for a while. Yeah, brilliant well done Maria and thank you so much and congratulations to our winner tonight and tonight we're going to end on our quote of the day oh am I doing the quote of the day well it's your favourite bit (laughs) oh I do like the quote of the day (laughs) managing stress as a school leader is not about avoiding the waves but learning how to surf them with grace and resilience well we do which I had neither of <laughs> job. So anonymous we that didn't know we don't know who wrote that but I thought that was a really lovely quote because it's so, you know basically saying you know learn how to how to deal with it you know kind of you're going to experience stress so get some strategies ready 
so that you can resolve that for yourself. So thank you ever so much, everybody, for joining us tonight. And have a lovely week. And hopefully it's not too hot in your classrooms. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. See you next week.